Okay, this is easy for easy to do for problem girl. This is easy stuff. This is all stuff we did in Algebra 2. This is simple stuff. We're going to use a calculator for most of it. So here we go. Hey, okay, here are the scores of a recent test in the statistics of 30 students. Calculate the summary statistics and write them below. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our handy dandy calculator. Work. There we go. And remember, we turn it on. We go to stat. We hit enter on edit. Now, we want all these numbers gone. And please don't jump to conclusions. You go up to L1. Do not hit delete. You will delete the column. You hit clear, and you just come on back down, and it's empty. Okay? You clear the list. You don't want to delete the list. You can get it back easily, but let's not do that. Now, I'm not going to record this whole thing. I'm going to hit pause here. But basically, you're going to start by hitting, start putting in 90. Enter. Now, you can go across 78, 68. You can go column 75, 70, 78. You do what you want. Everybody enter those in. We'll come back here in a second. All right. So I am at my last one, number 91. Notice it says L1, 30, 91. So when I hit enter, now it says 31. But notice there's no data enter. That's because I haven't put any in. So I do have 30 data points. If I go up, there's my 30th data point. So that makes sense. But still, remember, just like the rule in carpentry, Measure twice, cut once. Before you do any calculations, because it happens all the time to anybody, everybody, one time or another. You actually need fat finger or hit the wrong key or this key sticks and it goes five, five, six, and you probably put it in the 56, it happens. So what you should really quickly do is always just look at your list and go up and check, you know, 91, 89, and do this all the way up and make sure you have entered all your numbers correctly. <coughs> Okay. okay, so now that I have calculated, I'm going to run my statistics. So I'm going to hit stat, I'm going to go over to calculate, and I'm just going to hit enter on one bar stat, so that means one variable statistics. Now I need to make sure this is lined up, so if I put them in L1, I can just hit enter, enter, enter. If I had to put them in L2 because I accidentally deleted my L1, I would just change that to L2 by simply hitting second two. See, above 2 is L2, so it's blue. But I want to take it back to L1, second 1. And there we go. Let me just hit enter, enter, enter. All right. So the question is, what's the mean and what symbol should we use? Well, it's the very first thing on it. So we're going to write our notes. It's, nope, that was not right. We have to pick one marker. So the symbol we use for mean is X with a bar over it. We just call it X bar. And our X bar was 83.3. <coughs> Going down. B, what's the standard deviation? And what symbols should we use? And how do we interpret this? Well, remember, we talked about this before. And last year, we have SX, and then we have that little Greek letter X. Okay? So... Since we're sampling our population, this is not all the stats people in the world or anything in the school, it's a sample of that class, we're going to use SX. No, it's so pretty close, 13.9, 13.7. Not a big deal, okay? But we're going to go with SX and go with 13.9. <coughs> okay, so that's the symbol we use. What does that mean? What it means is... For the sample, the deviation from the mean of A three point three is about 14 points on average. More specifically, 13.9, but if we we're just looking at a class score, the deviation from the mean is about 14 points. Now, the min, Q1, median, Q2, 
Q3 and maps. That's the five number summary. Not five finger death marks, five number summary. So we're going to get that from scrolling down in our list like so. So we have our minimum is 32. Okay. Q1 is 77. <coughs> so 32, 77. Good one with that. Our median is 84, 94, 100. 84, 94, 100. Now, min is just the lowest score in the class. Someone bombed the test. Max is 100. Someone aced the test. The median is the middle. This is also known as Q2. Okay? It can be either one. It's the, it's the second quartile. And remember, the quartiles are just 25%. If we, if we grouped the uh, grades in four groups, so cut them in half, and then cut them in half again, we have four sections. You guys are in section one, section two, section three, section four. That's what quartiles are. They have four quarters in a dollar. So this is the, these are the benchmarks. These are the where we draw the lines. Now, this is a very confu not very confusing, but it often gets confused on tests. The range. The range is low to high. All right? Low to high. So 32 to 100. Technically, it's 68. That's the actual size of the range. I like to put the actual low and high just because it gives us an idea of where the range is. But technically, 68 is the range. Now, the IQR, this stands for inter, meaning between, quartile, kind of self explanatory, between the quartiles range. Okay? Now, that is saying, let's look at this. And we're going from here to here. So it's Q1 to Q3. Which was 77 to 94. Again, technically, we actually write down what the mathematical number is. That would be 17. They are both ranges. But the interquartile range is just from 1 to 3, and range range is the entire range from low to high. Okay, so we've talked about individual points that fall outside of the data pattern. They are called outliers. You've already seen and kind of already pointed out what the outlier for this class is. The formal way to see if a point is an outlier is not just saying, oh, it looks like an outlier. There's a mathematical way, and we've already done that earlier this year. The lower fence, or boundary, is Q, Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR, and then the upper one is Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So, let's do the math. Q1, okay, so my lower boundary is my Q1, which is 77, minus 1.5, times the IQR, which we said was 17. So we take 17 times 1.5, that's 25.5. And if we do 77 minus 25.5, that's 51.5. Now my upper fence is going to be my Q3, which was 94. Plus, again, same thing, 1.5 times 17. We know that 22.5. Sorry, my bad. 25.5 plus 94 <coughs> is 119.5. Which, considering we're talking about a test here, that's way above. No one's going to get that. If it was IQs, that would make kind of make sense. So what we're saying is. An outlier would have to be over 119.5 or below 51.5. So if we look back at our data, obviously everybody kind of already eyed the 32. Are there any other pieces of data that are under 51.5? And the answer is no. 
So this is the only one. Someone got scored 32. Okay. If someone got scored 50, that would be an outlier. If they got scored 52, it'd be low, but not an outlier. Okay. Grab a box plot of the data showing any outlier. So again, box plot means we take a line and we put it at 32, 77, 84, 94, and 100. Okay? This is our low. That's our high. Q1, Q3. We can call this median or Q2. We box the interquartile range. Just kind of highlight right here, put a line there, put a line here. And then we call this 32 and 100. 94, just to make it easy to read, 84 and 77. And that is our box plot for it. And you can see where the obviously that wire is way down there in 32.